The ES-295 is one of the coolest guitars that's ever been made, and I've always loved the Scotty Moore version. And seven months ago, when doing some research for this video, I ran into a flipped upside down under version. Let's talk about it. Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. So that's the story of how I ran into Alley Cat guitars. Let's talk about their first one here. Because if ES-295s aren't your style, and you like classic cars, I think you're gonna like this episode too. So here it is, the Memphis Cat, inspired by the Gibson ES-295, but with a few different modifications here. So first off, all the guitars this particular guy makes are made out of metal. Dave Gartland is a class one sheet metal worker and welder by trade. He just thought that was the right material to make all of his instruments out of. So he templated out the body, cut it out, welded it all together, sanded it out smooth, cut out and stylized the F-holes and controls, installed premium quality Seymour Duncan antiquity pickups, and then it kind of looked something like this. Now you guys know, Gibson is pretty finicky with their body shapes, right? So of course we had to take some artistic liberties here, and I like it because it makes it like abstract art at the same time, like it's a bit goofy and doofy, but I think he captured that perfectly with the fact that it's made out of metal, and his interesting pickup choice with a single coil in the center position, with not one but two Alnico 5 staple pickups. It looks pretty cool right on its own like this, right? But then it finally gets its gold finish, and it just completely transforms this thing. But then when you view it on the side, it's like, okay, this kind of works, especially once you add the pick guard and you get the other fancy appointments like these bound F-holes. And this particular version has the Melita bridge and their own unique tailpiece here, which has a fancy guitar all on itself. And it looks like we're borrowing some Gretsch elements here, with a master volume up here with two independent volumes and a master tone. The only thing so far I don't agree with this one is the fretboard. It looks a little bit streaky in not quite the good way on that one. Looking at the back, these appear to be bolt-on necks. So I could be wrong here, but I think he's just buying pre-built necks and that's why the fretboard looked the way it did. And he's just crafting the body and then using the help of some other people around Australia to like do the finishing touches. Which the finish of this one he credits to ND refinishers here in Adelaide. But what an interesting blend of specs here, because the staples, they come from early Scotty Moore history when he was using his L5 with the staple pickups. But yet this is more closer to the ES-295 shape. And with the high-end Seymour Duncan pickups in here, you can't go wrong. So if you're interested in one of these, I don't know, you might be able to find one used somewhere, but he does have some prices listed on here. So just a two staple pickup version is going to cost you about 5800 but I would guess that's Australian. But it can cost up to 7000 depending on what you're looking for. But how does a metal bodied guitar sound? Let's go ahead and check it out. <laughs> Alright, so we get the basics of Alley Cat guitars now. But if you weren't necessarily impressed with the Alley Cat, I guess I wouldn't blame you. You have to be like a diehard Rockabilly 295 fan to really appreciate what those things are. But hey, how about some classic car culture? Looks like a Chevy Bel Air, all metaled out body. You've got the Bigsby Filtertron style pickups, four different controls. That is a pretty sweet piece. But check out the 59 Cadillac here, <laughs> all pink in its glory. We've got the lights back here. This just looks like some sort of a spaceship. Okay, all right. I guess we have had an all metal guitar on the show before. This bad boy right here, the spaceship guitar. No wonder these things are so cool. It's just this time, you know, cars and guitars, they kind of go together. I could see Billy Gibbons playing something like that. This one's kind of funny because it's 59 Cadillac instead of Cadillac. However, it does appear he's made them with like the official branding on it as well. But these ones look like TV Jones style pickups. Here we've got a special with, oh nice, a little blinker back here. It's really hard to visualize these things because you almost need them to be in like 3D in a video to fully appreciate what they're doing here. I really like this one because <laughs> it's just, you know, the front of the car there, that's pretty nice. You've got your hood badge right there and it appears he's done many, many a different colors here. We've got a whole bunch of different 57 Chevy Bel Airs. I'd say this green one's my favorite, but the ebony finish is pretty nice as well. But if classic cars aren't your thing and you're more into superheroes, how about this Batman one? That's definitely a leap in a whole different direction. But if spooky things are more your style, I, I guess he's got the, the devil cat here too. I can't say I'm a big fan of the artwork on this one. It just looks a little bit distorted, but I think that's exactly what was intended. But oh my goodness, I've never noticed this before. It's a neck pickup only guitar. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that supposed to be a, a jazz box? <laughs> That's silly. Kind of like the Memphis cat, this one looks a little bit better viewed from the side. But it looks like he's getting his daughter Lauren in on the action too. She's designing this Sonic guitar that's not quite yet done, but I think you guys can see what's going on here. It's gonna have its blue Sonic hair. I'm curious if they'll actually do the face or not. Because that has been done before as like the full on face, which are gonna look pretty cool playing. But you've also got the ESP options. Looks like a Shadow the Hedgehog and maybe a few others. So I'll be interested to see where they take that. Looks like we also have some karate guitars. Oh my goodness, he even has a, a bike guitar. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a bike guitar ever, so I can applaud him on that. But I guess when you're not working with wood and just metal and welding stuff, I mean, the sky is truly the limit. But okay, here we go. Les Paul influenced Alley Cats. Now this is a little bit more like what I like. So the cutaway is different enough and they're in a different enough of a country to not have to really worry about it. Looks like it even has like an ES-295 influenced one right here. Gibson has also done something very similar to that, even with the sharp cutaway. It's part of Gibson's Guitar of the Month series, the LP-295. But it's candy painted over a holographic effect, still with that aluminum body. That's interesting, it's kind of like a new play with what we normally do with like flamed and quilted figuring. And surprisingly, I actually like that blue into green burst, really reminds me of like abalone colors and then you get all the perloid plastics here. But then we're getting like an Ibanez headstock on that, what's up with that? <laughs> and oh my goodness, is that a locking nut for a Bigsby? That might be a bit excessive, but okay. So I wonder if the ones that actually have flame on them, if it's actually just a pattern that he's put on there or if he actually put like a flame maple veneer. But so far, I would say the all chromed out one, you know, everything that he's known for probably looks the best. I mean, that is just ultra shiny and nice. And of course, he can do engravings for you. But it looks like as expensive as it could get is about 4,500. You can't be rockabilly without some flames. Also has some bike guitars. And then in a weird twist of fate, he's blent the 57 Chevy with Street Fighter with the Brass Knuckles headstock logo. And of course, since he's into rockabilly, he's done the double basses as well. I'd be curious how this thing would sound. I mean, that is really cool looking. It's like simulated flame, but just with the carving of the metal into that. It certainly looks eye-catching on stage when you put some pinstriping on it. It also looks like he's got some new designs, like some alien stuff going on here, working with a 3D CNC machine. So he started with metal, but then that might scare some guys away. So he's kind of like blending them together. So now we're getting some Zemitis vibes over here. But take a look at this Cobra. That's a pretty cool carving. I guess he's probably going that route because it's a little bit easier to produce them, I would imagine. Oh, and what's this? The Office guitars? So there we go, Alley Cat guitars, some very strange out there designs. I mean, Gibson has done some similar things to this in the past on Les Paul and SG models. So it's cool to see somebody else's take on these, blending all these elements. So I'll leave you today with a little bit of a slideshow here, as well as some playing samples. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.